Let's take a look at some performance mods on a 4.8 liter with a Junkyard M90. How much are heads, cams, and headers worth? I'm here at West Tech Performance. That means I have a 4.8 liter up on the dyno. I've got the little M90 supercharger sitting on top and we've got the following questions. On a supercharged 4.8 liter, what happens when we upgrade the camshaft? Right now, we've got the Truck Norris NSR cam. What happens if we put something a little hotter, like the hot rod cam? Does it make more power? What about cylinder heads? It's got those junky old 706 heads. What if we install 799 heads with a valve spring upgrade? They're a little Truck Norris cam deal on the 706. Did it need more valve spring under boost? <laughs> this is a good test. What about headers? We've got a set of inch and three quarter headers and we want to upgrade to inch and seven eighths headers. Are the bigger headers worth any power? There's only one way to find out. Quick, to the dyno. Okay guys, we made our runs and obviously we're making a bit more power. In fact, we've exceeded 500 horsepower officially with our M90 supercharger, which is awesome. Credit a little bit of the Super Richie porting and the bigger throttle body. I don't know if the headers came into play on this. They are a different configuration. They're inch and three quarters. The other ones were inch and seven eighths. They have a little bit different collector length, quite honestly. Inch and three quarters is probably more than enough for what we're doing. And we did it just so that I can get the 802s and we'll get into all of that later on. But now what I want to do is, I, I wanted to replace the camshaft in this thing. We have a Truck Norris camshaft in it with a 448. It seems to work pretty well. And yes, it is a turbo cam. And it is also an M90 blower cam. But I want to put something bigger in it because we don't have a whole bunch of blower to play with But now all we have to do is make the naturally aspirated combination more powerful So if we swap the camshaft, we're going to replace the Truck Norris NSR cam for a hot rod cam We know from previous testing on the 5.3 the hot rod cam makes more than the Truck Norris cam So I want to put that in there, but I had one problem these factory 706 heads are terrible. Not all 706 heads are terrible, just these. When I got this motor from the wrecking yard, it was damaged. One of the rockers was glued in place. The hole for the rocker stud was wallered out and it was, <laughs> it was just in a state of disarray where the other one had broken push rods, all kinds of stuff. And, and then a couple of the parts were just filled with carbon. I did what I could to chip it all out. But I thought, hey, rather than just replacing the springs in these heads, I'm just going to put different heads on them. I have the 799 heads that came off of the 5.3, that L33. They already have the valve spring upgrade on them. Quite honestly, I'm just going to swap those heads and put them on. And what I'll do before I put the camshaft on, I'll just swap the heads. And we'll find out if the heads make any difference at all. And then if they do, we'll be able to document that. And then after the heads are on, they have valve springs, I can install the camshaft. Let's get going. That's how we do it. So the Eagle Eye viewers will notice that I have an extra pulley here. Actually, it's an idler. And what it does is just add a little bit more belt wrap around this pulley. We didn't really have a belt such problem, but I've added this pulley and it seems to help. Everything seems to be stabilized, but it's in the way. Now I got to take this all off so that I can get to the cylinder heads. Here we got stock, rusty springs, look at that push rod. <laughs> Does your push rod and your motor look better than that? I could hope so. Yeah, this thing's awful. So let's go around the other side and I'll show you. Just give you an idea of how nice this thing really was. If you take a look at this right here. Yeah, the original guy when I got this from the wrecking yard tried to drill that out, missed terribly. That's the one that he tried to glue that rocker back in place. That didn't work out very well. Okay, you have to take out the rockers, push rods. Each one of the heads prepped. See, got them on both sides. Got all our grounds and everything off. We're gonna leave our injectors connected. We just disconnected the main connector. And what I'm gonna do is undo all of these bolts securing the high ram. And we should be able to lift this whole thing off as one unit. Fingers crossed. Okay. 
Now it's time to start working on the heads. Take off our little crossovers here. Get in and get the small bolts on the head and then the big ones. Now it's time to pull the head. Before we put the 799 heads, we need to head over to the machine shop. And by machine shop, I mean razor blade rebuild. Boom, and just like that, a freshly machined set of heads. Okay, everything's ready. We got our 799 heads on, which is awesome. Now, fingers crossed, we're gonna go start it up, make sure everything's okay, make some pulls. Okay, run the test on our heads. Actually, the 799 heads and the Valfre upgrade didn't really show much of a power gain. I was kind of surprised, you know? <laughs> 706 heads for the win. Even those raggy old ones, man. I really thought that these heads were gonna pick up power, even though they drop compression a little bit, but they do flow more and they had a valve spring. I thought that was gonna help us maybe, you know, with the boost, we're getting a little valve float because they were old stock 706 springs and we had we got this Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norse NSR camshaft, but it seems to be working pretty well. So now what we're gonna do is, now that we have the heads on there with the valve spring upgrade, now we're gonna take it back apart and swap cams.
Okay, guys, we're going to go through our power gains pretty quickly. This is our 4.8 liter, uh, an LR4. It has 706 heads. It's all stock on the bottom end. We did put a Brian Tui Truck Norris NSR camshaft on it. It has a high ram with the single throttle body lid on top of it. The, the front mount had 105 millimeter throttle body, has inch and seven eight headers, feeding, collector extensions, and mufflers. And then we ran this thing with E85. We wanted to run it naturally aspirated before we put the blower on. So run in this configuration, our cam 4.8 liter with the high ram produced 385 horsepower and 336 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened initially when we ran our M90 supercharger. It produced 487 horsepower and 452 foot pounds of torque. This was equipped with, this was the M90 a Gen 5 blower with the factory M90 Gen 5 throttle body on it. We just converted it to a manual throttle body. It had a 2.6 inch pulley on it and we ran it with the factory crank pulley and all of these combinations were run with all of the accessories on it because we had to do that in order to run the blower. So we had the uh, water pump, power steering, the alternator was not hooked up on the blower combination, but was on the NA combination. But here's what happened when we made further modifications and the most recent testing that we did with the blower. We picked up quite a bit of power. We went from uh, 487 up to 507 horsepower. And what we did was I put a bigger throttle body on this. I port matched basically the inlet into the blower. We kept the pulley sizes all the same. The blower was the same. I port matched the inlet put a 92 millimeter fast throttle body on it, although the inlet going into the entry of the blower was not as big as 92 millimeters. So what we had is a situation where the throttle body flowed more than the inlet of the blower still, but we did improve it a little bit and we picked up quite a bit of power. We picked up a ton of torque, all of the torque down below 5,000. That was basically just timing. So that's not a gain from the blower, <clears throat> but we did pick up flow from the blower and we were up over 500 horsepower, but we still had the 706 head. So the first test we did on this go around was I went ahead and changed over from the 706 heads to the 799 heads. And here's what happened. Basically, we saw no change at all. <laughs> I mean, we saw a little bit of change. The 706 head still made a little bit more mid-range torque, but not very much in the 45 to 4600 RPM range, given the variances between uh, each one of the runs that's not even that big of a deal. But basically, the 799 heads lowered compression. They flowed more. They did have a valve spring upgrade, which allowed us to put a camshaft in. So now let's find out what happens when we add the camshaft. So let's look at the last two tests. Uh, actually, the last three tests, they include the camshaft upgrade, the, the header upgrade, and the radius air intake. So you know the radius air intake. We put this bell mouth entry on the throttle body but it made no power. <laughs> and the reason for that is not because bell mouth entries don't work. They do. It would definitely improve the flow rate through that throttle body, but that wasn't the problem. The throttle body was already bigger and flowed more air than the entry going into the blower. So we needed to solve that problem before trying to make the throttle body flow more. So the radius to air entry looks very cool and I definitely want to have it on the throttle body when we do the testing. But in this case, it wasn't worth any power because that was not the restriction. But now let's take a look and see what happens when we upgraded our camshaft. So we have our combination. 4.8 with the 799 head and our M90 supercharger on there. Here's what happened when we replaced the Truck Norris cam, the Brian Tilly Racing Truck Norris, with their bigger hot rod camshaft. And I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so you guys can see that. But the hot rod cam, definitely bigger, definitely made more power every time we've tested it. It has done that on the, on the 5.3 and the other things that we've run it on. But it picked power up from 508 horsepower up to 524 horsepower. Also, the boost dropped slightly, which we expected it to do. When you make the naturally aspirated combination uh, more efficient and more powerful, you'll see the boost come down and the power go up. That's exactly what happened. Please also note that down low, below 4,300 RPM, there was a loss in power. This is a pretty good size camshaft now for a 4.8. And this is kind of typical of bigger camshafts you get to a point where you start trading power and that's exactly what happened here. But now let's take a look at our final test and that and those were long tube headers. When we had run this combination previously, 
we had run inch and seven eighths headers, but we installed these inch and three quarter headers because it had all the O2 sensors on it. So we could run eight O2s. Please take a look at the video where I showed you what happened with the air fuel distribution because the, the discharge of the blower was right over four of the cylinders on the high ram. And I wanted to see if it favored those four cylinders. As it turned out, <laughs> spoiler alert, it did not. But the way that we found that out is running eight O2s in these inch and three quarter headers. But I wanted to find out, we had run this thing before with inch and seven eighths, do inch and seven eighths headers add any power to this combination? So we ran our dyno headers with the, our inch and three quarter headers with just collector extensions. And then I installed the inch and seven eighths headers with our collector extensions and mufflers because this is the way that we had run it before. And for those of you thinking, oh, you shouldn't run mufflers. Yeah, we should. <laughs> These mufflers don't lose any power. In fact, I like running things with mufflers anyways because it's just way too loud without them. But here's what happened. This is our inch and three quarter headers. And here's what happened when we ran our inch and seven eighths headers with the mufflers on it. Hey, it made more power. Look at that. Uh, peak power jumped up from 524 or so, 525 to 537. So we're talking about 12 or 13 horsepower gain from the inch and seven eighths headers over the inch and three quarter headers. So it just goes to show you sometimes these combinations are very responsive to different kinds of long tube headers. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Let me know in the comments, what else would you like to see me test with this M90 supercharger? I know two of them, right?